from Studio 7, the fully customised Tonight Live 93. Ten months free, Joe, and only driven to church on Sundays. Tonight, Rex Mossop's very special friend, Julian Clary. Fast forwards, fabulous Jane Turner. Norman Gunston jumps on Guns N' Roses. Fluff is also Eric, the big wet dog. But now, would you please make him very welcome? The man even Axel said was rude. Guns and Roses himself, Steve Spider Visor. Ah, we're back, and we are ready for a huge 1993. I can tell you it's going to be big. Big, 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 bigger than Elvis's medicine cabinet. <laughs> bigger than Kerry Packer's saddlebags. A, uh, we've got a few changes. We've got a new set. All right, it's not a new set. Um, <laughs> that was the new set. A uh, few problems with the new set. I, uh, I don't want to go into details about the trouble with the architect, the painter, and the pit bull terrier. Um, it doesn't really matter who bit who first. The point is it didn't happen, so uh, if you have any ideas whatsoever about uh, what we could do with our set, if you've got any bits and pieces we could send, you could send in, a bit of trellis, uh, uh, whatever, fax us in or send the bits in and we will personally arrange them uh, on the set as part of our 93 endeavours. Isn't that right, Merv? Merv Ford, floor manager. And I must say, how are you, Merv? Oh, I'm great, Steve. Good great to be back. Looking very well. Yeah. You were on the tennis? Uh, tennis for two weeks, day and night. Lovely. How'd you go? Great. Made Sweet. the second round of doubles, but... Excellent. I, I must say I'm delighted uh, at this point to welcome one of the hottest musicians in Australia. He's played with and, uh, and written with and for, I think, John Farnham. He's an original member of Sherbet. <laughs> 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 True. We're thrilled he's with us. Sam C and the Feelers. Hi, Steve. Hi, Sam. How you doing, Steve? Very well. Uh, that guitar, that's the original Sherbet guitar. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. It looks like somebody lost their lunch when they painted it. Very interesting. Apart from, uh, apart from that, we've got some, some changes this year. Untold number of groundbreaking regular segments. Uh, we've got some new segments. Just to give a couple away, we've got a segment called Medical Bloopers and Blunders, which we're looking forward to. Uh, Death of a Pet. Um, <laughs> Fax us a novel, uh, celebrity potato look-alike, and of course, my personal favourite, The World of Beige with Brian Bury. So they're just some of the <laughs> segments. Had a very good, I had, a, I had an excellent Christmas. I, I slipped, slopped and slapped all over summer. Mm -hmm. and that was just one particular restaurant. I, uh, I, did, I did some flying, did a bit of flying. Didn't want to go anywhere, just wanted to build up my frequent flyer points. <laughs> Three more trips and the steak knives are mine. <laughs> Watched a bit of telly. Saw the, uh, did you see that? Saw the Gulf War on telly. Anyone see the Gulf War on TV? Anyone? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Personally, I felt it wasn't as good as the first one. <laughs> but, you know, sequels never are, and that's the problem. <laughs> I, uh, I, watched the, I watched the tennis. I did watch the tennis. Uh, Merv saw you, and I want to congratulate Jim Courier on an outstanding win in the Australian Open. And of course, Jimmy celebrated his win by diving into the Yarra River. So, there's uh, Jim. Uh, <laughs> Teddy, we actually missed, we missed him hitting the water, Ted. Can we just, can we see him going in? Because he could have stopped halfway in, Ted. There's no, if we could just show Jim Courier diving into the Yarra River, and there he goes. Uh, and uh, uh, he, uh, he uh, of course, uh, the pollution wasn't that bad, and he'll be back, uh, he'll be back uh, reasonably soon. <laughs> uh, 
Tragically, the life uh, moved, just chuckled. Tragically, the life of a sporting legend ended prematurely on the weekend when the biggest man ever to step into the wrestling ring, of course, Andre the Giant, passed away. And today, of course, the coroner collected his 42 stone body. <laughs> How would you like to be a pallbearer at Andre's funeral, huh? <coughs> then again, not. Here's, um, now, here's an interesting switch. Neighbourhood Watch, did you see the story? I think you may have the story about the swearing mum in the news, Teresa Weston. This is her. Teresa Weston was placed on a $300 bond for swearing at her son William at home after being dobbed in by a neighbour. This is not Ramsey Street. Now, uh... <laughs> A neighbour dobbed her in. Now, we actually have Teresa on the phone for her side of the story. Teresa, you obviously disappointed about the uh, magistrate's decision to fine you. Good evening, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yes, imagine my surprise when I found two police officers at uh -huh. my... Not now, William. Mummy's on the phone. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, two police officers at my door serving uh -huh. a... Gee, that's f***ing right, William. How did you put oh, Teresa... them on the phone? Th Shut the Yeah, Teresa, if I could just... Uh... <laughs> Thank you, uh, Teresa. Uh, uh, entertainment, we've got, that's of course Teresa Weston on the phone. She's, uh, but, uh, we have, uh, we've got entertainment, uh, you were asking, we've got buckets of it. I know Teresa was. One of the most dazzling cross-dressers in the world. He played rugby with Rex Mossop and lived to talk about it. He's going to chat. He's going to sing. Julian Clary joins us. <laughs> We've got an exclusive preview of Norman Gunston's Guns and Roses interview. A brand new segment on the show called Read My Lips with an all-star cast including the fast forwards Jane Turner and Jerry Connolly will be joining us. <laughs> but first up, the moment we've all been waiting for, the latest news headlines with our newsreader with the mostest. There's always one, isn't there? Uh, in an effort to make me watch the whole show for once, they've decided to put the news at the end, but we have headlines at the front for those who might want to go to sleep early. <laughs> uh, coming up in the news later on the show, uh, the crew of a rescue helicopter survive a crash in the Blue Mountains, looking for a dreary bushwalker. The federal government comes under attack over a multi-million dollar advertising campaign. Thousands of heavy metal music fans endure heat, rain and dust to see American band Guns N' Roses. <laughs> And the Super Bowl, spectacular with nearly as many stars off the field as on Stephen. Thanks, Clive. Did you have a good weekend, Clive? <laughs> Was it a good weekend? Uh, for, not for me, no. Good, excellent. <laughs> My, uh, <laughs> we'll be talking to Clive a little later in the show. My first, uh, my first uh, non-news guest a, uh, for 1993 has had more sticky moments than a leak in a clag factory. Makes Danny LaRue look like Mel Meninga in a bad mood. Currently starring around Australia in My Glittering Passage, uh, which is the name of a show. Would you please welcome Julian Clary. Settle yourselves. Good evening, Steve. How are you? He's good, thank you. Well, I want to sing a song now, and I want to dedicate it to my estranged boyfriend in Amsterdam. His name is Gerrit Schraut. I met him in a club called The Exit in Amsterdam. He said, my name is Gerrit Schraut. I'm very beautiful. I get a lot of attention in the bars. I said, hello. I'll have a schooner of sherry, please. And I've been on tour for a few months now, and I can't remember what he looks like. But the interesting thing is, I can rem remember every inch of his penis. <laughs> I have a very long memory. <laughs> There's nothing you could do could tear me away from my guy. My guy. 
There's nothing you can do Cause I'm stuck like you to my guy I'm sticking to my guy like a stamp to a letter Like birds of a feather we stick together I'm telling you from the start I can't be torn apart from my guy I gave my guy my word of honor to be faithful and I'm probably going to be you best be believing I won't be deceiving my guy as a matter of opinion I think he's tops my opinion is he's the cream of the crop as a matter of taste to be exact he's my ideal as a matter of fact no muscle bound man could take my hand from my guy My guy No handsome face Could ever take the place of my guy My guy He may not be a movie star But when it comes to being happy There's not a man today Who could tear me away from my guy be a movie star but when it comes to being happy there's not a man today who could tear me away from my guy but newton perhaps there's not a man today who could tear me away from my guy or mr bar mix <laughs> almost anyone you care to mention could tear me away from my guy Take a break. We'll be back after the break with Clive Robertson. Stick around. He's live, Marty. Today, you can tell me where Parents fighting the war against junk food. Now there's a new problem. Could McDonald's or Pizza Hut soon be available at school canteens? And how to mend a broken heart? I think men suffer more. Real life. 6.30 tomorrow on 7. In nature, there is no such thing as a straight line. Nature prefers curves to make her creatures sleek. Nature is forceful, but her elements can be mastered. Yet nature is impulsive and we must be ready for her every turn. Just as nature selects the perfect shape for its environment, so too does Ford, introducing one of the world's most advanced and best equipped sedans, the new wide-bodied Ford Telstar. Don't miss Spotlight's three-day store sellout on now. Printed interlock, $3.99 a metre. Printed cotton chambray, $3.99 a metre. Ninja Turtle furnishing fabric, way below half price, $1.99 a metre. Indian cotton rugs, half price from $25. Ruffle quilt cover sellout. Famous brands up to 40% off. Tea towels below half, 50 cents. Tapestry lap frames, $8.95. And mini vacuum attachments, amazing, $15.95. Three days only, Spotlight's store-wide sellout. Hurry, ends Wednesday. Mercantile Mutual Insurance was conceived by a group of businessmen during a cricket match in 1879. Since then, Mercantile Mutual has stood firm through recessions, wars and natural disasters of all kinds, taking care of Australians, their property and investments. Now, Mercantile Mutual is one of this country's most unshakable businesses. So no matter what the future may hold, if you're with Mercantile Mutual, your future is in good hands. Right now, at Laguna Keys Resort, you can stay in the luxury of the five-star golf lodge 
or a two-bedroom hillside terrace condominium. Three nights for just $501 per person twin share. Or six nights for just $773 per person twin share. Both offers include East-West return airfares from Brisbane. Fly in now because this offer ends March 31st. Phone East-West holidays for details. You say when you see the sign at your favourite chemist. Cashmere bouquet soap eight for three dollars. Kleenex tissues at dollar ninety-five. J and J baby powder two dollars. You say when you see the sign at your favourite chemist. Sister Act. It's better than ice cream. This is my third time. It's better than springtime. It's better than Lucy Ball. Better than sex. It's gonna bring my mum and my grandma. No, no, no. Yeah. This is my third time. This is the second time. This is the second time. Definitely come back and see it again. Sister Act. And the feelers, welcome back. This is Live 1993. Uh, we've got uh, Dorothy Weston on the phone, uh, ready to pick up the conversation about the swearing ban. Finish your f***ing home and clean up your f***ing leg eagles. Good. Little Aussie bleeder left Slash and Duff from Guns N' Roses completely bewildered when he pounced on them uh, the other day. Here's an exclusive sneak preview from the all-new Norman Gunston show, which starts on 7 next Thursday, February the 11th. Um... <laughs> Why do you wear bananas on your head? <laughs> Sorry, uh, why do you wear bandanas on your head? I don't think either one of us have bandanas. You know, on stage, but, well, you know, Mr. No, Hubcap that, does. Ax, well, yeah, Axel usually does. Mr. Yeah, who? Hubcap. I thought his name was Hubcap. Sorry. Uh, it's Axel. Oh, it's going to be one of those things, uh, right? <laughs> well, you know, you guys have got pretty unusual... Um, Nicknames, you know, like uh, Slash. <laughs> uh, you haven't got a prostate problem or anything, have you? <laughs> Calm the um, I just woke up, man. Can we don't give me this I'm not ready for you. Are uh, you uh, write songs about sort of depravity, murder, racism, uh, 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 drug abuse, and millions of impressionable teenagers buy these songs? Uh, you, you haven't got one to spare, have you? Because <laughs> You named the band after me, but didn't you? Gunston Roses. <laughs> Do you want to get up here? <laughs> yeah, <well>. No. <laughs> there you go. Hi, uh, my next guest is the world's jolliest manic depressive. He's happiest when he's uh, on his own. Journalist, newsreader, and beast. It's old misery guts himself. Please make him feel miserable. Clive Robertson. <laughs> Not a journalist, come on. Steady on, that's insulting. You're not a journalist? No, too bright to be a journalist. <laughs> Have you ever contemplated being a journalist? Uh, no. Do you, uh, do you miss television, Clive? I knew you'd ask me that. And I thought, on the plane, what clever answer could I give? Yes, I do, actually, when I got on there again. I'm doing radio at the moment, which is, in essence, the same. I find it the same as television. No one else is, just, everyone else is quite different, it's the same. Yeah, I do. I miss talking to people. That was the bit I enjoy. But you can do that on radio? Yeah, it's just not the same. It's funny. You get to meet a lot of people don't want to go on radio. I mean, you wouldn't go on a radio because, you know, you have to go there in a taxi and a few people <laughs> recognise you or not, you know. I mean, <laughs> not that it's an ego trip, but it's nice to be recognised, isn't it? Channel 9, what happened there? In 56, they started mm -hmm. in Australia. <laughs> I was, I, I was thinking really more latterly involving your own career. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I walked into that one, didn't I? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, was, I had this premonition before the event. Or someone said, do you have the premonition before the event? I said, it's a good time for a premonition. <laughs> and uh, and um, they said, uh, you know why you're here? And I thought, on earth? You know, this is going to mm -hmm. be one of those father-to-son chats with Mr Leckie. But he said, um, we're uh, not running the program anymore and you're not required. I said, OK, which is one of my better retorts. <laughs> and um, they said, we're sorry to see you go. And I thought, 
Why let me go then, you say? So, um, I left. Well, that was... That's it. I had no remorse, no. Was it acrimonious in any way? They keep sending me bombs in the mail. I think they... <laughs> that would be... I would have thought that was inside. No, it's not acrimonious at all. No, it... it, it whatever that means. Did you, uh, did you get sick of the show yourself? I mean, was it the people or the show? No, no, the people. Ah, the, the, the terrific people to work with. That was the joy. It's the floor crew um, that I enjoy most. We never saw anyone, the executives, except when they took a wrong turning. You know, at television studios are like, and we say, down that place, sorry, they apologise, it won't happen again, and it didn't. Um, but the crews were terrific. They're just mates of mine. We had a great time, and I think we strive to do good things. Nothing lasts forever. It's good to see you back this year. I mean, I thought the rumours, I thought, what are we going to do late at night? <laughs> so there you are. So that hold you've got over seven is just amazing. It's terrific. Well, David Leckie called me into his office. Did he? Yeah. I've heard about that. Yeah, and he's at nine. Uh, what sort of fan mail uh, did you get, if any? I got a lot of loony mail. Now, I don't know whether you get loony mail from people who, who said, I waited till one o'clock at the shopping centre and you didn't turn up. Why? And you sort of <laughs> look for the name and... Uh, I got some good letters from people, but I was never thrown by it. Occasionally you get a whole lot of really bad ones where, where clever people sit down and construe a very cruel letter. Not the loonies, but the cruel ones. And the sad thing is a lot of them were internal mail. That was the <laughs> Did you know, Do you notice with loonies mm. that the writing starts off quite tight and, and small and concise? And as the letter progresses, it gets bigger yeah, and I more cursive? I find that when they write 17 pages with neat handwriting, it's a worry. So, I, 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 I don't know, I've never been thrown by the letters. Then again, you wonder if anyone watches. I don't know. You must wonder the same. <laughs> would, you, would you describe yourself as a professional grump? I mean, by that I mean, do you turn it on? No, no, what you see is what is. No, not a professional grump. I'm, I'm unimpressed by a lot of things in life. And what I say is not really radical. It's what a lot of people think but don't say. But those people who, uh, those loonies who go around saying everything's going to turn out well, what they base that on, I don't know. And I just say, no, it isn't. There's no evidence of that. And they say, you're a cynic. I say, I'm a realist. You're a cynic. And they're right and I'm wrong. Because as you know, what you fight here is perceptions. People perceive you in a certain way. No matter what you do, it won't change them. But you're not going home and, and doing jazz ballet or, or laughing or, or, or... That's your next guest, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, don't, I get ecstatic about a few things in life, uh, generally classical music. Uh, talking to people who've achieved things, I've met some great people, and laughing with friends, you know, laughing at people's deformities, things like that. It's just terrific. <laughs> there's, there's been a lot said about your views on women, and I read somewhere that your ideal woman is actress Helen Slater, who plays Supergirl. Yes, she does. She is. She's, have you met her? No, I haven't. Have well, you? this puts you at a slight disadvantage. She's gorgeous. Well, she's, that's her on the screen. What, what is it about Supergirl that you like? It's not a good shot of her, is it? She wouldn't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. If you don't like it, say so, but don't try so. Do you, do you, do you, do you fantasise about Supergirl? <laughs> no, I, no, I don't actually. Um, and I think we'd all be inadequate. I mean, I don't know what her expectations are, but if she's a typical woman, it's just to have her be really nice and be friends. And why don't you be nice and cut that other business out? Why, why, why her? Just a lovely face. I met her uh, here in Melbourne. Yeah, she did the only interview in Australia and she did it with me. And uh, she sat there. You have to see her face, honestly. It was just a glorious face. And she smiled. She had an impish sense of humour. And I thought, what a gorgeous creature. You can fall in love with beauty, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm with Clive Robertson, not entirely the grump he's cracked up to be. Uh, Norman Gunston starting soon. This is just a piece of it. Can I go home? I want to go back to school. <laughs> You never had it so good. Man. It's be a good idea for a film, don't you think? Honey, I shrunk the Elvis. Says the father left me, found a new place to go. Lonely Street, Heartbreak Hotel. Um, it's not ringing a bell. How's your left uh, testicle? Well, yeah. Let's try it again. Again? Yeah. Says my baby left me, found a new place to go. Down the lonely street, heartbreak hotel. <laughs> Prince Charles? Desmond Begley. Oh. Now that you say it, yeah. on and off. But one. Well, yeah. yeah. Mad Elvis fan. And he used to sound exactly like him until he got hit by that cement truck. Uh, <laughs> testicle. Yeah. Testicle. Ball nut. Oi, don't need to say a word to you. 
Thursday. We're going to be doing a five-day redecoration of my own bathroom. There's no better way to do that than using a 20-pound sled. A do-it-yourself disaster. Home improvement. 7.30 Thursday on 7, followed by Herman's Head. The Camrys are coming! The Camrys are coming! The new white body Camry, it's big! I hear Toyota dealers are getting rid of everything to make way for it. Everything? Lexan, Forerunner, everything's going at crazy prices. Oh. The new wide body Camrys are coming, so your Toyota dealer has clearance space. Could use a new speed myself. Well, now's the time. Everything's gonna go because we know the Camrys are coming. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. If you're into boating and fishing, you're probably already watching Ken Brown's Coast Watch on 7 Nightly News. Now, Brownie's Beacon to Beacon directory takes you safely through the maze of beacons between Harvey Bay and the Tweed River. There's over 80 easy-to-read maps, including a guideline to show you the correct way through the beacons, and a complete marine services guide for quick contact with anyone in the marine industry. Ken Brown's Beacon to Beacon directory. Don't leave port without it. $29.95 at all news agents, bait and tackle shops, and marine outlets. If you really want to make the most of your money, you should come and see me about getting a check account that will make you money and not cost you money. I can arrange an advanced check link account for you that earns high interest daily and we won't charge you a cent in bank fees. If that appeals to you and if you're serious about your money, come and talk to me. A bank that works for you. Now that's an advanced bank. My next guest has never appeared on television before. Research and development guru, Mr. Randall Tompkins. Hello. Now, Randall, a new cola that tastes just like a regular cola. Uh -huh. But it has no caffeine, no colouring, and next to no calories. Why? Well, we wanted to fit more schwep of essence into our cola, so we had to take a few things out. <sighs> Remarkable. Any side effects? None that I've seen. New Diet Schweppes Crystal Clear Cola. Refreshingly clear. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Yes, she is, isn't she? Made the right choice here, Mrs Green. Did I? Oh, I think my first game here was only 12 inches high. Well, she is only three months old. Oh. oh here, let me... Uh, we are the boys from man. With Alcan, the more windows you replace, the more money you save. So phone us now. Just a bit of wind, that's all. Can the boys from Alcan know everything? They can't. Can they? Maybe they can. Eddie Murphy. Well, I'm very flattered, Mr. Chairman. Dick. Well, I'm very flattered, Mr. Dick. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Chairman Dick. Oh, Dick, just Dick. Oh, just Dick, just plain old Dick. The Distinguished Gentleman. Now with extra grunt. The new 1.8 EFI Corolla. Tomorrow. School or the boat shed? Will his arrogance... Why don't you just get off my back, Nick? ...prove his ignorance. Not only selfish, but stupid as well. ...and a heartbreaking reality. What, do you want to live with her? No. How will she handle the rejection? Tomorrow on Home and Away. Sam, excellent. Excellent. Welcome back. I'm with Clive. And in this multimedia world of ours, sometimes it all just gets a little too much. What are you looking at, Clive? I'm just reading along with you. Thanks, that's fine. <laughs> brings back so many memories. It does, doesn't it? What are we really being told? What exactly is in between the lines? And if we don't know, why do we have to pay for it? Just go with me. To answer none of these questions... <laughs> Our very own brains trust. Just a bit out, I'm sorry, I did my best. Yeah, sorry, there was a comma there, wasn't there? <laughs> to answer one, none of these questions and more, our very own brains trust in our very own new game show, Read My Lips. <laughs> Now, uh, would you please... Roll... Thanks. Uh, thank you for... In this, uh, in this uh, new Read My Lips panel, would you please welcome our panellists, Simon Rogers, Sue Ingleton and Anthony Morgan. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Uh, who are playing for their home family, the Keating family, <laughs> and uh, that's them there. And uh, we've got uh, on my right, Jerry Conley, Jane Turner, and Tim Smith, who are playing. who are playing for their family, the Sullivan family. The Sullivan family. Now, the rules of the game are so simple, we won't even bother with them. The prizes are so uh, unbelievably, uh, we won't even bother with those either. Now, you'll understand it as we go along. The first category is what was going on when the photograph was taken. What was going on here when the photograph was taken? We'll start here with the, uh, the Keating family. That's, what... uh, that's a picture of Jeff Kennett. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to Irene Prescott. She's 98 years old, and he's saying to her, Irene, a vote for me is a vote for your future. <laughs> <laughs> challenge, challenge, oh, challenge. Yeah. Yes. challenge. Um, we actually Except. believe, we actually believe that that, that is, in fact, Count Yorga Premier, and he's sucking the youth out of a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that would be... Uh, that would be uh, challenge, uh, challenge, uh, challenge back, challenge yes. back. Actually, I think we'll find that, that is uh, Jeff Kennett discussing some exciting new recruitment ideas with the president of the Young Liberals. Right. No, well, he's I'm saying sorry, politics yes, yes. does age you, doesn't it, Joan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, no, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Yes, one Kennett. more, one more. Yes, Jane. He's saying, fluff can jump. Scott can run. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, look, I'm going to award uh, both of you one point uh, for that uh, answer. What is going on? That's the best it goes, Tim. The next, uh, next uh, question is to the Sullivan family. What's going on in this photograph? What was going on here? Uh, we wash inside and out at Chappaquiddick Car Spa. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Now that's Peter Moon washing his car at home. See, he is a Wally with water. No, it's a, to it's a Toyota Corolla having a Laboyo birth. <laughs> <laughs> Toyota Corolla. Well, someone's waters are broken. I don't know. I don't know. Is. Uh, yes, of well, course. Well, I don't know. I don't believe any of those. I actually think that it's Mike and Mel Leyland and they're doing a story on the mysterious dropping cars of the Hawkesbury. And um, <laughs> you can actually see a little bump in the bonnet of that car there, and that's in fact Mike's head has actually come through from underneath. <laughs> and that's Mel cacking himself in the background going, ha <laughs> Yes, I'm going to award one point to the Keating family there for uh, some excellent answers, I'm sorry. What, uh, well, it's a very good answer, Tim. What's going on here, Keating family, in this photograph? Oh, that was a this was uh, actually in our paper, and the caption on that was, bricks are great says brick fancier Sir Rolly Polly Bottom Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> challenge. <laughs> yeah, I hope he will challenge that. <laughs> Rude and crude. What? Uh, but I got to say Rolly Polly Bottom Cheeks on telly. He said it again. Telly. <laughs> he did. Twice. Twice. What is, it's an, actually an advertisement here and the man is saying, you too can pass bricks if you use Lester Alice All Brand. <laughs> No, yes. no, no, challenge, sorry, it's, it's nothing to do with the, uh, the poo jokes already mentioned. It's Lester Ellis's father, I think, in fact, showing us the secret new Australian glove implant used by Lester in his latest heavyweight bout. No, it's Lester's baby. He's showing them Lester's baby. <laughs> it's none of those. It's, 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 the old block, it's, is it's that none joke? of those. He's just saying, someone stole my camel and they also took the other brick. <laughs> yes, well, I'm going to award none of you points for those answers. Uh, I'm oh. sorry. Uh, have we got any? Have we done all of? I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, have we done all of the? Uh, have we done oh, all of the photos? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This, this is this is to the oh, Sullivan yeah, family. What's going on here? This, this, she's saying, look, girls, it's easy, and just think, if as only my. <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep going. <laughs> James James. With only my husband this morning. No, no, no. No, 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 no tell her. She's saying, she's saying, if this, if this is the menopause, then I'm Bill Hunter. <laughs> and in fact, it is the menopause, and she is Bill Hunter. Is look, Bill Hunter. look. Yes, yes, yes. in drag. Julian that, Clary, eat your heart out. I'd like to challenge that in the name that? of taste. And um, I actually think that it's, um, she's saying, I boiled my sea monkeys. And you can see um, <laughs> see a little crown and a scepter just above her thumb, and she's actually boiled the king as well. Oh, yes, okay. Anthony. Well, in the name of distaste, that's the uh, the lady mayoress of Camberwell, and she's saying constipation. What constipation? <laughs> um, uh, in fact, uh, again, oh, I'm deducting points yes. for both oh, of your no, answers you there, and I'm giving the uh, Sullivan the Sullivan oh, score yeah. heavily there. Yeah. Yeah. We're, um, uh, th we're moving on to another category. This is complete. The headline. These are headlines, and we've taken a word out. And the first one is Sophie Swap Sex Four. And uh, I'm, ask, I'm going to ask the panelists to complete the headline after this commercial break. Have a think about it during the break. Give me back to
have high speed. Would you like to help police catch the parasites who pinch cars, enter homes, mug, steal and worse? Watch the new Australia's Most Wanted. New because now police are directly involved. New because it's live. As the show happens, detectives will be here in the studio following your leads. Help find missing kids. Get justice for the victims. Watch the new Australia's Most Wanted. Your call could catch them. The new Australia's Most Wanted is coming. Every time your foot hits the ground, heel strike shockwaves travel through your entire body, causing stress, injury, and pain. Your body needs protection against heel strike. Sorbethane is the most shock absorbent material known to man, capable of absorbing an incredible 94% of impact shock. Sorbethane insoles protect your body against heel strike. So get on to Sorbethane for body and soul. Now with extra grunt, the new 1.8 EFI Corolla. Is Singapore Asia's most sophisticated city with the best shopping in the world? Are Penang and Phuket two of the most exotic holiday destinations imaginable? Then say yes to Concord Holiday Singapore Experience. Five nights from only $998. Get three of those nights in Penang or Phuket for an extra $330. Return World Traveller airfares with British Airways, transfers and breakfast included. As a bonus, children under 16 travel at child prices. This is a great offer only available through Harvey World Travel. Unbeatable bargains in Spotlight's three-day store sellout on now. Prince of Wales fashion furnishing checks, half price, $4.99 a metre. Chantilly continuous lace, unbeatable, $4.99 a metre. Towel sellout, half price plain towels, $4.95. 100% cotton drill, $1.50 a metre. Quality sun and air linen, $8.99 a metre. Assorted craft books, $1.50. Eight o'clock, $9.95 a metre. For three days only, Spotlight's unbeatable sellout. Hurry, ends Wednesday. Welcome back to Read My Lips, where the scores are roughly equal. We uh, went up to complete the headline, and of course the headline we were looking at is Sophie Swap's Sex for What? The Sullivan Family. For, uh, for a salad roll at play lunch. Oh. <laughs> uh, credibility, Sophie swapped yeah. sex for credibility. I thought she swapped her sex for two chapa chups and an incomplete set of footy cards. Um, Please. Sophie swaps sex for safe Senate seat. Oh, excellent. Alliteration. <laughs> hey, it was our go. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. It was and we actually, we actually thought that Sophie swapped sex for cash. Oh, no, I think, no, we I think, no, we I, so I really, I, 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 for Pat Cat, no. I, I think we probably wouldn't have thought yeah. that, Tim. No, and, no, no, uh, no, 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 and in fact, minutes. the answer was Sophie sells sex for study. <laughs> so I'm going sell. to swap, swap, swap sex. Lucky I didn't put my foot in. Just a bit of wishful thinking there. Uh, complete, complete the headline. Bush calls on world to get. <laughs> To get what? Uh, I'll okay. throw this to the key. No, I'm going to throw this to the key team. I'm sorry. To get a decent haircut, a proper job, and some no, good friends. To get on with it. Get on with it. To get a life. 
<laughs> no, Bush calls on world to get some milk on the way home. Well, I'm afraid the answer was Bush calls on world to get Saddam. The Bush calls on world to get Saddam. I'll give you both a point for that one. New category. <laughs> the new category is odd one out. There are four pictures here and one of them is the odd one out. I'm going to ask the panellists to identify the odd one out. Uh, first four, Batman, Superman, an emu, <laughs> and Christopher Scase. Uh, the odd one out, I'm going huh? to throw that to the Keating family. <gasps> I think it's Christopher Scase because he looks lousy and tight. <laughs> Good, I think it's actually it's the emu because the other three are all fictional. They don't exist. <laughs> I think it's the <laughs> emu Christopher because Scase. he, he didn't money. bugger off to Spain after borrowing millions of dollars. <laughs> uh, yes. Challenge. Yes. Uh, some of them can't fly and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> no, 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 it's the emu because the other three are <laughs> And I don't even want to comment after that. You've got, more, you've got more chance of getting an emu to fly than Christopher Skates. Yes. The, uh, the Batman's not a flightless bird, is he? No. no. Uh, nobody gets points for that. Uh, oh. The uh, Sullivans, uh, identify the odd one out here. We've got Camilla Parker Bowles, a tape recorder, Princess Di, and a potato. I, I think uh, Prince Charles should uh, comment on this. Um, I think the tape recorders are the odd one out because the other three are vegetables. <laughs> no, they are. Challenge the royalty, I'd say the. Uh, in fact, the potato is the odd one out because it's the only one of the four not used by gutter journalists. Mm. How do you know? No, the potato is the odd one out because the no, the tape is the odd one out because the other three have eyes. Ah, uh, no, the, yes, the tape is the odd one out because all the other three can be peeled. <laughs> <laughs> no, the potato is the odd one out because I wouldn't mind eating a potato. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, oh, bitch, what a bitch you <laughs> Thanks. Say. I'm going to deduct points for that, Anthony, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to deduct five points for that. You and the last, on the last one, uh, these four here, uh, girl, Mount Fuji. A sumo wrestler, Luciano Pavarotti, and the Gold Coast. Oh, okay, Sullivan's. I'll open it. No, I'm sorry, no, the no, Sullivan's. No, I'm reading to the Sullivan's. No, no, no. Oh, I think that it would have to be Luciano Pavarotti because he's not owned by the Japanese. Uh, that could be no, right. No. no, no, no. It's the Gold Coast because the other three are very big down the bottom and all going to points at the top. <laughs> For stupid answers, Jane, I'm going to give you two points. Great. Right. It's not. It's not good. Um, Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Would you thank the panellists in Read My Lips? Hey, Clyde. Pardon? How are you? Similar to what I was about 10 minutes ago. Just checking. It's taken him 20 minutes to walk from one side of the set to the other. Imagine how long it would have taken if he was dressed up. Would you please welcome Julian Clary. Let me say how amazed I was at your singing voice. Uh, have you had singing lessons? Um, no, I've, I just have a, a sort of natural warble that I get by with. Uh, it, it's a good voice. Is it? Uh, what did you think of it, Clive? Hearing it for the first time, as I imagine you did. We actually got a conclusion yet, Stephen, but it was interesting. Yeah, it was. Uh, I see you speak the same way as you are on the telly. I wasn't sure whether, in fact, you adopted a different persona. I'm on the telly now, so yes. that's probably hard to tell. No, I mean, when I spoke to you previously. Oh, right. <laughs> you see, typically, when we shake hands, everyone thinks it's the first time we've met, but we go back No, we minutes. met round the back of a that's bit of hardboard, right. didn't we? That's right. <laughs> rather nice. Now, Julie, Julian, of course, uh, last night for you was uh, the Red Raw party. I was there. Now, Rhythm is a dancer. It's a form of pleasure. Uh, the, the Red Raw party, for those who aren't in the know, is what? It's a, it's a big warehouse party that you have every year, I believe, uh, in Australia Day. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, and it was lovely, down by the docks. And um, I was there till dawn. What can I say? What were you doing? I was just mincing round, really, looking and uh, talking to a few people with uh, my glamorous assistant, Mr Jelly, was with me on... Mr on, Jelly? ...on toilet duty, because... Uh, <laughs> 
I had to keep going to the toilet and someone has to come with me, as you'd understand. <laughs> uh, Cl Clive, uh, would you describe your... Do you have someone who goes to the toilet with you, Clive? <laughs> no. No, I've never needed that. Well, I, I can always offer. <laughs> it might not be accepted. And you have to be careful when you go to the toilet here because of creepy crawlies under the seat. Red widows and all that kind of thing. And I had a killer snake in my bedroom the other night. Mm -hmm. If you had red widows, you'd be in the wrong loo, wouldn't you? Really? Mm. Clive, uh, you, are you, would you just... <laughs> Golly, what is wrong with you people? Widow's a woman. Have I explained everything? I, I knew what a widow was. Now, would you describe uh, yourself as a party animal, Clive? No, I go to a party about once every ten years. <laughs> seriously, quite seriously. Why is that? Well, for a start, the noise is too loud. Then people shout, they smoke, and they get drunk, and I don't. Sounds any of those lovely. things. And then I, I'm very attractive to drunken women who I don't normally find appealing. <laughs> and you you're... can't reason with drunken women. Now, I've read this about you. Did you say that you're a sort of a sexual magnet? Pardon? <laughs> but you describe yourself as some I've sort of... I've never a... used that expression. Not that expression, but... Oh, I see. So you're not describing what I said at all. <laughs> you describe yourself in broad terms as a sexual magnet. I've never said that. But women find you attractive. Drunken women find me attractive. <laughs> You're a, so you're a sexual magnet for drunken women? No, I'm not a sexual magnet, but something goes wrong with them when they drink when I'm around. <laughs> do you have good relationships with women? Apart I do from... now. I do now. I didn't up to about a year ago. I do now. What have you done to, to modify your persona? or what have, what have women done to modify theirs? I don't know. And there are older women that I used to know too, so I don't know whether my standards are dropping or whether I'm just going senile. I don't know. But I now find... I talk to a lot of women. Blokes are pretty boring after a while. They get very blokey in Australia, don't they? <laughs> That'll be for me. Hello? Steve? Yeah? It's John Farnham here, mate. How are you? Hey, John, how are you? <laughs> How's life? Good, mate. Fantastic. What are you doing? Uh, just, uh, just, just doing a Tonight Show, John. Oh, oh, you're on the air? Uh, actually on the air at the moment with Clive and uh, Julian Clary. No, mate, actually, I'm sitting in front of the television, propped up in bed on four pillows with a cup of tea in each hand. Oh, good, aren't you? Watching the show. It's it's fabulous. Have, have, have you got anything you'd li like to ask Clive or Julian? Oh, other than how are they? No, not really, no. It's just, I guess, I, 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 is Julian's outfit itchy? Is your, is your outfit itchy? Not at all, no. <laughs> no it's, it's leather and metal, which doesn't itch, unless you've got crabs, which I... Like. I won't repeat the answer, John. No, John... I, I, I can see that in living colour. Is, is Clive's outfit itchy is, is your outfit itchy, Clive? He's on a run, isn't he, John? <laughs> he really is. No, not as such. So, obviously, nothing's travelling. John, what have you got to... <laughs> John, what have you got coming up in the immediate future? <laughs> oh, uh, mate, I'm, I'm going to start trying, trying to write some songs and uh, get the next album together, actually, Steve. And what? I'm actually trying to remember what band that Sam C was in originally. I think, I think it was the, uh, the Flying Circus there for a little while with a song called Hayride, if I remember right. Sam, what was the first band you were in? I uh, sure it was actually the first band, but Flying Circus I was in as well. I was, was in them all. You've yeah, see, I, I knew, I when knew that was it. settled down. Mm. Do me a favour, Steve. Mm? If you ever ever decide to record anything that Sam ever writes, oh. just... <laughs> I'll, I'll get you with you. this one, see. Yes, no, you just, just be very, very prepared because he doesn't like to let go. You've got to have four bottles of red wine and plenty of time to let him <laughs> go, and you'll be OK. Well, I'll, I'll make a note of that, John, when I'm doing my next album, uh, which is coming up around uh, March, so... Uh, has he? Uh, Sam, do you want to take us out with a, a number from the flying... Uh... Uh, not particularly. What about Hayride, right, Sammy? Come on. Hayride, right, Sam. Out. Come on, Sam. Out with Hayride. Right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more after this. I'm with Julian and Clive and John. Tomorrow. I'm frightened. What problem has brought two friends together? Anything, anywhere you want to go, my show. And a fainting guest. He passed out. Could be the end of Bernice. He's got more serious problems than that. A country practice, 7.30 tomorrow on 7. Most economical.
couple four-cylinder cars, unbeatable. Hey, check this. Pepsi have just brought out three wild new summer flavours. Cherry Pepsi, Raspberry Pepsi, and Strawberry Pepsi. From the wild side of Pepsi. They're going fast, and once they're gone, they're gone forever. Pepsi Summer Flavors. It's what we've all been hanging out for. The shopping's done. There's still a doubt. The checkout. Open checkout seven. Real Woolworths, the fresh food people. With a helping hand We should come earlier. Oh, look straight through. You don't want them scrambled. Faster checkouts, come what may. We're the Woolworths Fresh Food People for the way you live today. In the golden sunshine, people can share a summer dream. A moment with Cornetto. Streets Cornetto from real dairy cream, the richest ice cream, wrapped in a new crispier cone. Discover your heart, your heart of cream. Ah! Pizza Hut backpack is now four ninety five with any pizza purchase. It won't save your life, but it will save you twenty five bucks. Drop into Pizza Hut now. Pizza Hut tonight. You'll say when you see the sign at your favourite chemist. Palm olive shampoo or conditioner, $1.95 each. Oil of Uland, $7.95. Colgate toothpaste, $1.45. You say where you see the sign at your favourite chemist. Pizza Hut Tonight. Tonight, seven nightly news reported on new prostitution laws. Tomorrow, Tony Barnett takes a closer look at legal suburban prostitution. How would you feel having a prostitute as a neighbour? Take a closer look tomorrow in Close Up, only on seven nightly news. Yeah, Melbourne made. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And welcome back. I'm talking to Julian Clary, who's wearing Australian made uh, leather wear, and it looks Melbourne made. Particularly <laughs> nice. Oh, looks similar to some of mine. Right now, it's time for the very latest news with Clive Robertson. Hello again. Now, the crew of a rescue helicopter walked away with minor injuries today after their machine crashed in the Blue Mountains. The helicopter came down while searching for a missing bushwalker. Just after lifting off from a refuelling stop, the Westpac Rescue Helicopter Lifesaver 1 made a crash landing. They had a problem with a power loss. The pilot attempted to uh, make a landing and he had virtually landed it when the rotor just clipped the shed in the compound there. The impact sent pieces of metal from both the helicopter and the shed flying in all directions. The chopper rolled onto its side and crashed through the compound fence, coming to rest just metres from fuel drums in the depot. Despite the extensive damage to the helicopter, the crew scrambled to safety with cuts and scratches. Minutes before the crash, the chopper had been searching for bushwalker Diane Clancy, missing on a walk with friends. But as the helicopter sent to find her lay in pieces, a second rescue chopper spotted the 24-year-old and winched her to paramedics waiting on the clifftop. Our current Prime Minister was on the campaign trail today celebrating the birth of Medicare. The Federal Opposition says the government's $4 million Medicare advertising campaign is no cause for celebration. The Prime Minister and his deputy were celebrating today what they call one of the Labor government's greatest achievements, nine years since the present Medicare system was introduced. Then the Prime Minister launched a $4 million advertising campaign, urging people to claim all Medicare entitlements. But the opposition says it's not much more than a pre-election stunt. Four million dollars of taxpayers' money on a propaganda campaign like this. But now there's concern in government ranks that the recall of federal parliament later this month may not be such a good idea, since it would be dominated by questions over Speaker Leo McClay's $65,000 compensation payout following a bicycle accident. But staying away means politicians won't get to use one of the new amenities at Parliament's gymnasium, a $28,000 steam room provided by taxpayers. 
70,000 underprivileged people packed into Melbourne's Calder Park tonight for a heavy metal experience with American band Guns N' Roses. They first had to brave searing heat, rains and then dust storms. The skies opened up above Calder Park just before 6 o'clock. A series of downpours turned the previously dusty concert site into a quagmire. Fans had nowhere to run and little protection. The long wait to get inside proved too much for some. Dozens of people collapsed from heat exhaustion. But many fans were saved that fate by a roadside water crew. Despite that, the crowd has been well behaved. Only a handful of arrests for drunkenness. Guns and Roses, along with a host of top support acts, got the fans jumping. This is one of the biggest concerts ever staged in Victoria. At $55 a ticket, it's also going to be one of the biggest money spinners. And the music makers were also out today out in force for America's biggest sporting event, the Super Bowl final, at a cast of stars on and off the field. Three hours before the nation's biggest sporting event, roaming hordes of Buffalo Bill fanatics. Buffalo! All trying to outscream roaming hordes of Dallas Cowboy fanatics. And when you get 100,000 fanatics jammed in a place like the Rose Bowl, you've got a lot of people getting hot under the collar. The heat is on. Yeah. The heat is on. That's why they bring in the likes of Glenn Fry and Fleetwood Mac. Entertaining the masses keeps the tempers down. And kickoff can't happen until exactly 3.18 p.m. That's for the benefit of television networks around the world. 900 million viewers in 100 countries. Chapter 1 begins. Half time and out comes Michael Jackson. Between all the entertainment, between all the hoopla, and between all the commercial breaks, there was a game. And Dallas won it, thrashing the Buffalo Bills 52 17. The way it is, Stephen. Thanks, Thanks Clive. And we just uh, to, thinking about sport. Australia is a sporting nation. What do you think, Julian, as a, an outsider? Are we too much of a sporting nation? Um, well, no, I don't too much. And we have as much sport as you want. Um, you've certainly got enough parks in Australia, I've noticed. Mm. Parks everywhere, aren't there? Mm. I think the whole country was designed by a homosexual, that's my theory. <laughs> <laughs> so there's plenty of room for, to do all your sporty stuff. Whatever it may be. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't interest me, but, you know. Are you, uh, were you ever a sporting person? Um, I, I had to play rugby and cricket at school, but, but only because I had to. It wasn't something I wanted to do. And what position did you play? Left back. <laughs> Clive, are you a sporting person? I've played most sports and done quite well in them, but I've learned that they're for people who are not great will to live and not very bright, so I don't involve myself anymore. Thank you for asking. <laughs> what, Clive, what do you think about the perception of Australia as a great sporting nation? Uh, you know, it's a it... shame that that's all we've got, isn't it? Productivity would be handy at the moment, wouldn't it? Mm. You know, it's very sweaty. It's not really the... It's the lowest common denominator, and it is common, isn't it? It really is. Were you, were you a schoolboy champion or a schoolboy athlete? Yeah, it was good. Uh, I played golf, hole in one. It took ages Take to find pardon? the ball. And it was in the, in the cup. Some, um, rugby union, uh -huh. right front row, won every scrum. Proof was, if I backed off, we lost the scrums. I knew where the power was. But it was the change rooms that worried me. It just leads on to things. <laughs> they want to be involved. You know, things. What sort of, this, this is a very... Sorry, this is an interesting it line is, isn't of it? conversation. What do you mean? What sort of thing? Well, they, it's just an excuse to cuddle it. You've seen them. You've seen them in soccer internationally. They go into the coital position where they win a goal. It's not the winning for the team. It's personal pleasure. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's an incentive. What, sex? You don't think so? It's disgusting. <laughs> it really is disgusting. It really is. Uh, and you've spoken to people keen on sport. They're not very bright, are they? You know, when they drop into this mode and they salivate and we one wonders about personal hygiene. I like things of cerebral nature. But do you like hugging people? I mean, under what circumstances would you hug someone? Uh, anyone that wouldn't feel that it was misconstrued. I'd, I'd like to hug a lot of people. If you hug women, you, there's a time limit, you know, before your brain says, this is rather nice. <laughs> and if you hug a bloke, a, it is a problem that they might think you're of a different persuasion. And why should you ruin it by saying, this is not a homosexual advance, I'm actually happy to see you. I'd hug you, except you'd go funny. But you... Uh... <laughs> you think I'm joking, don't you? Julian, you wouldn't hug me. You don't hug people, you see. I I'd asked that very question today. They said, you don't hug people. I would hug you. I'd hug Julian. I would hug anybody. Okay, well, they're lied. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't... 
we're not thinking about sex when we do it. No, 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 it'll just be something you do. It'll just be That's mates. That's what I mean. We, you, but we're so screwed up that we won't hug. We shake a hand. I mean, how peripheral is that? Clive, would you come back another time and discuss hugging with us? Amongst other issues? Say no. No. Thanks, Clive. <laughs> Clive, you will come back. Clive will come back. Julian, you're on tour. These are Julian's tour dates. This is where you can see Julian. See you again in February the 18th. Thank you, Julian. Thanks, Clive. And thank you, Australia, for being here. See you tomorrow night.